This is the essay of a poor first-hand student that got into Columbia. A 79-year-old woman approached me as I was unloading the truck. The gleaming twinkle in her eye was an indicator of her warmth. She handed me a warm plate of fresh snickerdoodle cookies as she introduced herself as our neighbor, living in the apartment right next door. Darlene ended up being that light in the dark that I needed to help me through a rough patch in my life. My mother and I were moving into the new apartment because of my parents' recent divorce. It was especially hard on me since my dad blocked us both on his phone and social media accounts, seizing any communication with us and turning my three older brothers against me and my mom. It was like I had lost a whole support system in one day. With the many nights spent on the porch watching the sun disappear on the horizon, Darlene helped me understand that my brothers didn't hate me. They hated the narrative they were being told by my dad. My dad wasn't the best to me, and I thought it was because I was gay. She taught me that I should love myself because I am the only one who is always going to be me. Growing up in rural Oklahoma and being gay was hard. Being the only out gay kid for miles meant being stared at no matter where I would go, always receiving that sneer that made me feel like I wasn't wanted here. I don't even use the public restrooms at my high school due to the bullying I received. I often heard that I don't belong in the men's restroom and if I ignored that, they would lose all sense of personal boundaries and climb over stalls to continue bullying. I only knew this one perspective and I felt compelled to fit into this category. I felt like I couldn't express myself. I couldn't do the things I wanted to do because they could be seen as too girly. I felt that I had to fill in these shoes left by my brothers by being a country boy who gets all rough and dirty instead of being able to do feminine things like getting my nails done or going shopping. I felt as though I would never find myself. Darlene would tell me stories of growing up in a big city where differences and diversity were normal and that I should embrace that side of me. These talks of grandeur and a big city made me yearn to move there so that one day I wouldn't always be the freak of the town and I'd be able to go somewhere without always being stared at. As time went on I realized Darlene's health was declining. I remembered walking into her apartment to see how she was doing like I do every day and I found her on the floor. She had a stroke and broke her hip. Recovery was hard for her and her daughters thought it would be best for her to be cared for in a nursing home. One night, as she was crying to me, she told me that she would rather be dead in a nursing home. Darlene has always been that rock for me when I needed her, and I was now presented with the opportunity to support her. I decided I would become her caregiver. So unfortunately, the three-minute timer is up, so fall for part two, where I'll finish the rest of this essay.